Hey, Jonathan here at Colfax Math. Today I'm going to go over the double angle identities in the Oxford IB Math SL book. This is chapter 12. The double angle identities are sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, and tan of 2 theta. These are a little tricky. I'll derive one of them and then do some of these problems. So let me put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started. <laughs> So this is section 12F, um, periodic relation, trig functions, and these problems are the ones I'm going to go over down here. So you could tell these are double angle identities. These identities right here are the double angle identities. So I would have these written down and have these as reference as you go through them. Sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine of theta cosine theta. That one's kind of easier to remember. Cosine of 2 theta has three different ways to write it. It's like a Pythagorean cosine squared, a theta minus sine squared. And then I'm able to replace this with a cosine squared to get the second version. And then I'm able to replace this with a sine squared to get the third version. And then tan of 2 theta is equal to 2 tan of theta over 1 minus tan squared of theta. And then a lot of times you're going to see that as a Pythagorean replaced with a secant squared of theta. Okay, so I'd have these written down and I would use them as reference materials as you do these problems. So this is section 12F, number one. That means an exact value problem. Number 1A is write this as a single trig ratio. So I have two sine of five, cosine of five, that looks just like this right here. Two sine of theta is equal to two sine of something, cosine of something. So this is the equivalent of sine times two, whatever theta is. Theta is five. So this is the equivalent of sine of 10. So one A is 10. Down to one C. One C says, Write as a single expression, two sine of four pi, cosine of four pi. I recognize this is a double, um, double angle identity. And I know that sine of two theta is equal to two sine of theta, cosine theta. So then I know this is gonna be sine of two theta and theta is equal to four pi. So this is equal to sine of 8 pi. So that's just kind of using the double angle identities to simplify these expressions. Let me go down to number two. So I'm told that sine of theta is equal to a third. And it's acute, which means it's the first quadrant value. So let me just draw the picture of that. What I'm saying here is sine of some angle has a ratio of 1 over 3. This is going to be my opposite over my hypotenuse. So what I'm saying is in the first quadrant with an acute angle of theta, I have a right triangle where my opposite is 1, my hypotenuse is 3. And then I use the Pythagorean theorem to say what squared plus 1 squared equals 3 squared. So square root of 8 plus 1 equals 9. So now I can figure out what cosine of theta is. So 2a says, what is cosine of theta? Again, exact value, so I'm not using a calculator. Well, cosine of theta of this triangle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So root 8 over 3. Part b, sine of 2 theta. Well, sine of 2 theta, I'll refer back over here to my list is equal to 2 sine of theta, cosine of theta. So sine of 2 theta in this case is 2 times sine of theta. Sine of theta and 1 third are the same. 2 times 1 third times cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is root 8 over 3. Now I just multiply these together to get 2 root 8 over 9 
And I could simplify that because root 8, so I have that 2 out front, root 8 is 2 root 2 over 9, or 4 root 2 over 9. I leave it in radical form because uh, it's an exact value problem. 2b, 2c is fine cosine of 2 theta. Again, I have to really have these pretty close to me. I could use any one of these because I have both sine and cosine of theta. I use the first one. So cosine of 2 theta is equal to cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. And don't forget, is the same cosine squared of theta is the same thing as cosine of theta quantity squared, right? But I just put that square in there so I don't have to write parentheses. So that's why it's the standard. So part C here says find cosine of 2 theta. What's going to be equal to cosine squared of theta? Cosine of theta is root 8 over 3. Cosine of, square, cosine of theta quantity squared minus sine of theta quantity squared. One third quantity squared, which will give me 8 ninths minus 1 ninth. I have a common denominator to give me 7 ninths. Then 2d is fine tan of 2 theta. We're using my identities. I know tan of 2 theta is 2 tan of theta, 1 minus tan squared of theta. So that doesn't look like it's going to help me too much. Tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So tangent of 2 theta is equal to sine of 2 theta over cosine of 2 theta. And why that's useful is I already have those answers up here. I have sine of 2 theta. I have cosine of 2 theta. So I'm going to rewrite tangent of 2 theta as sine of 2 theta over cosine of 2 theta. Then I'm going to go back up here, take my sine of 2 theta, which is 4 root 2 over 9, Divide that by my cosine of 2 theta, which is 7 ninths. So now I have this fraction right here, 4 root 2 over 9, divided by 7 over 9, or times 9 over 7. By multiplying, I cancel that and that, and that leaves me with 4 root 2 over 7. So that's the answer to part D. Okay, number three says cosine of theta is equal to negative one half. Find all these other um, cosine of two theta, sine of two theta, find all of those. I won't do those, but I'll just get us started. It tells you that the ratio of sides is a negative ratio. All students take calculus. So if it were positive for cosine, it would be here or here negatives here and here. It tells you it's an obtuse angle. So this right here would have an adjacent, a negative 1, and a hypotenuse of 2. And then I would use the Pythagorean theorem to get 1 squared plus root 3 squared equals 2 squared. So those are my ratio of sides, and then I could proceed from there the way I did on the previous one. On number 4, I'm given sine of theta is equal to negative one-eighth. So all students take calculus. If it were positive, it's here and here. It is negative, so it's here and here. But then it also tells you it's between pi and three pi over two. So that's how you know it's gonna be a third quadrant value with an opposite of negative one and a hypotenuse of eight. You can find the other legs and the other ratios of sides. Number five, solve this equation right here. I know that sine of t theta is equal to that. So I replace sine of t theta with 2 sine of theta, cosine of theta. So that's replaced with its double angle argument. And that's still equal to sine of theta. And divide both sides of the equation by sine of theta. That'll cancel with that. Those cancel give me 1, and then I have 2 cosine of theta is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 2, and cosine of theta is equal to 1, 
half. Positive ratio of sides, it'll be in the first and fourth quadrant where the adjacent's one, hypotenuse is two. Recognize that as a 30, 60, 90, or one squared plus root three squared equals two squared. And that's also gonna happen down here where the adjacent's one, hypotenuse is two, opposite's negative root three. So I think on number five, the domain is zero to two pi. So if the domain is zero to two pi, it's gonna happen here at 60 and down here at 300. It is in X, so we're in radians. So the answer will be pi over three and then five pi over three. So those are the two solutions in that given domain. I'll let you figure out number six and I'll jump down to number seven. Uh, given that triangle ABC has an area of 10. So I'm given the area is equal to 10 units and that sine of theta equals a quarter. So sine of theta equals a quarter looks like this where the opposite is one, hypotenuse is four, Pythagorean theorem to get root 15. It's a non-right triangle. So I know area of a triangle, area of a non-right triangle is one half a, B, sine a C. One side, the other side, sine of the angle in between. So the area of this triangle here is going to be equal to one half, one leg, root 15, the other leg, X, sine of two theta. Then using my double argument I know sine of two theta is equal to two sine of theta cosine of theta. So I'm gonna, my area is one half root 15 X sine of two theta, which is two sine of theta cosine of theta. And I'm also told that the area is equal to 10. That's given in the description. So this thing's equal to 10. Then on, on the left side here, I have one half times two, which is just one. So I have root 15 times X times sine of theta. Sine of theta is one fourth times cosine of theta, root 15 over four, and that's equal to 10. So I have one equation, one variable, uh, I have 15 times 15 times 1, 15x over 16 equals 10. I'll multiply both sides by 16. And 15x is equal to 160. Divide both sides by 15. And x is equal to 150 is 10 and two thirds, right? 10 fifteenths, 10 and two thirds. So that's section 12F in the book. Hopefully that helped. And then the rest of the homework for this week is really review of graphing, which should be pretty easy for all of you. So hopefully that helped. Um, if not, comment below and uh, hit like if you liked the video. Thanks for watching.